Hello everybody, Thaddeus here. I wasn't really planning on shooting a video today, but making a brief stop at a small waterfall here on the river and figured I'd shoot a video about uh, a wacky witness story. So coming out of the organization, having been a born in, it's the only life that I ever knew. It wasn't until I was on the outside able to look in and until I had communities of various kinds of what witnesses would call worldly people that I was able to see more clearly how peculiar and strange uh, witness behavior can be, uh, especially for age groups. So this particular story, in a vacuum, it wasn't that big of a deal, but it does help to illustrate what the society trains people to be. And it had to do with an older brother from uh, a different state. Gonna try not to give away personal details, but they moved here. And he used to be an elder, but he was no longer an elder. And he was uh, very controlling. And it's always hard to tell what goes on behind closed doors because you only see what you see with the, the witness public persona, um, he wasn't, at least from what I saw, he was not malevolent, nor did he operate with malicious intent. It more had the flavor, he felt like he was always right, and that the orders he gave, um, he was ex-military, was what was best for you, and you ought to know it. Um, you know, ask you to jump and you answer how high, that kind of mentality. But I didn't get the impression it was just control for the sake of control in like a narcissistic kind of way. It was more, he genuinely felt like it was the right thing, regardless of other people's opinion. And if he didn't feel like something was necessary, then, you know, it's not necessary. And what what's the story? So we're out in the ministry, and there's a older sister, uh, divorced, um, kind of an odd duck, a, a sweetheart in reality, but in a, a nexus of chaos. Always disorganized, always losing things, can't keep track of things. Um, like, lose your glasses on top of your head, you know, kind of thing. And maybe it's from all the opioids she took, uh, the painkillers that affected her for her back issues, that caused memory problems, I don't know. Um, but she was very, uh, a, a walking, I don't want to say catastrophe, because it wasn't that severe, but there's always something going on. And she was hot in the van, and we were parked, and all she did was ask this guy if they could roll down the windows or turn on the air. It's not a big deal, you know, didn't have to be a big deal, but apparently he didn't think it was necessary, so it turned into a thing. Where he's like, why? It's like, the temperature's fine. It's like... Okay, dude, you're in your 70s. Maybe your internal thermostat is not the same as the rest of us anymore. But because he felt like the temperature was fine, in his mind, the temperature is fine, and there's no reason to do anything about it. And it just turned into a back and forth as I'm sitting there. I believe I was the only one in the back because the others were out uh, at a door, I presume, if I recall correctly. So I'm just sitting there, and I don't want to get involved because I prefer to avoid drama, if at all possible, um, at the age I was at. And I, I had to, I very rarely did I ever go to the elders about anything because of what I saw growing up. But I did mention this offhand to an elder where it's like why did the simple request of could we get some airflow going 
have to turn into a debate out in service. It's like, who benefited from this? Who was harmed from getting some airflow going? It, it's just weird controlling witness behavior where there's not necessarily a good reason or excuse for it. It's just odd. It's things that quote unquote normal people shouldn't do. And I know there's plenty of damaged people outside the society, but everybody inside the society has been done damage one way or another. And that's just an example of such a little thing could turn into a, a mess. And I don't know if it's everybody is so high strung all the time because they're constantly kept on such a leash and the fear, obligation, and guilt, if it's a, a desire to try to spice up what is nominally a very boring existence. I don't know. But if you're still in, pretending to be still in or questioning, I just really take stock of the behavior that you see around you. And we all fabricated excuses for it. And for me, it was partially just kind of normal. It's just how people were, but it's really not. That's not how things are supposed to be. So what we can do with that is not emulate it, not continue it, to break the cycle. And I really think this generation is going to be a generation of cycle breakers, of chain breakers. At least that's my intention with a lot of these things. Uh, that's all I wanted to say for today. A oh, beautiful day. I hope you all have a good rest of your weekend.